Okay, call to order the meeting of the Rockford Select Board, February 8th, 2021. We are still operating under the pandemic rules. And um, we have a, we have everyone here. So we obviously have a quorum. We just came from another meeting, but well, we're on time. So I guess I don't have to apologize for being late. Um, but hence the reason why this meeting was an hour later than our usual start. Uh, so the first item on the agenda is the town manager's report. So. Thanks, Deborah. Um, so just a few things that I want to highlight, and I'll have some stuff added on at my, uh, my normal written report. So I just wanted to say that um, Officer Celiata Biaxu has um, gained her U.S. citizen citizenship um, as of, I believe, it was January 29th. Uh, her, her sister and her mother all were sworn in um, during a ceremony down at Homeland Security in Portland. So I wanted to congratulate her again. Um, I think that's fantastic. For those of you that aren't aware out in the general public, um, the town's new website was launched also uh, last week, a uh, week ago today, actually. Um, I wanted to give a lot of uh, a lot of shout out and kudos to uh, my executive assistant, Diane Hamilton, for working through this, uh, through this project and um, getting it up and running. I think it's a major upgrade. It certainly is more user friendly. It's mobile friendly, so it um, will automatically resize based on whatever device that the user is looking at with the, with the, to the website. Um, and it will be easier for staff to add material um, and to edit what's there. I also ask for everybody's patience. Anytime we have a new website where it takes us a while to make sure everything's migrated over, uh, sometimes material gets misplaced or I won't say lost, but just misplaced in the transition. Um, so we're still adding material and we will be adding it for weeks, if not the next few months. Um, and if anybody has a question about that or has a comment about uh, we've been getting some questions about, hey, where did this go? Or where did that go? Well, it, the material is in different locations. Um, so just feel free to send emails um, to myself or Diane to ask those questions. A um, couple of other highlights. The MDOT's three-year work plan was, um, was announced for 2021, 22, and 23. Um, most important, I think, a couple of things in that work plan. Um, number one is the sidewalk project for Route 1 in conjunction with the town of Camden, which would be generally from the Maritime Farms here on Route 1 um, into Camden to the Quarry Hill Road. Um, so we do have some funding currently uh, in the reserve account, and then we'll be uh, putting some additional funding into the next budget so that we can make sure that project, our, our share of that project is funded. In addition, the work plan also has uh, engineering for the Pascal Avenue Bridge. Uh, so they've, they've, they've allocated $300,000 for engineering, which is preliminary engineering and design work. Um, I've made contact with DOT and the uh, project manager for this, for the bridge project, um, to make sure that they know that we would like to be heavily involved uh, when it comes to the aesthetics of the bridge, especially, uh, but pretty much all aspects. So I've opened that communication, so hopefully that will, uh, that will continue. A um, couple of the other highlights, um, the MMA's Legislative Policy Committee, which I am a member of from the Senate District, uh, we've had our first uh, real meeting to begin reviewing uh, legislation that affects uh, municipalities. We reviewed 40 bills in our first session um, that relate to municipalities. And I do want to say that um, one of those bills is, is one of ours that we've asked Representative Dudera to sponsor, which was the wastewater lien fee increase. Um, that received unanimous support from the LPC. So um, hopefully that will go well for us. Um, I do plan on sending in testimony to the committee for that. Um, the excise tax exemption for uh, volunteer firefighters, that one did not receive support from the Legislative Policy Committee, which I was surprised with. Um, it was pretty evenly split, um, but it, it did not receive support uh, at the in the uh, end. Um, however, I took notes of various managers from around the state that were speaking in support of it during that committee meeting. Um, and so I'm, I'm re reaching out to them uh, to see if they'll provide uh, testimony to the committee when it goes to the committee uh, for discussion. 
Deborah. Bill, what was the um, what was the argument against it? You know, I was really surprised to be honest with you. Um, basically, the arguments against it were that communities didn't want to set another precedent, um, even though we've already had one precedent where. Um, certain veterans can have uh, excise tax forgiven, um, but they didn't want to have another uh, item that could be uh, dipping into their revenue streams, if you will, um, for excise tax. And while I certainly understand that, we, we wrote this bill so that it was a local option. Um, so it would not be mandated. Um, and, and it would be up to each community whether they would choose to recommend an ordinance be passed by their by their community uh, and then it would be up to the voters so um, I had a hard time with that um, I'm still have a hard time with it so um, we certainly will continue to fight the battle when it comes to um, uh, the legislature and I do know I've been in contact with as I said before with the Maine State Fire Chiefs Association and their lobbyists uh, and they do support the bill so they'll be speaking on behalf of that as well so I still think there's a pretty good chance of this uh, in, the, in the full legislature. Um, in addition, there are several bills in the legislature that allow for remote meetings of public proceedings to continue after the state emergency has expired, um, proposed by several different legislators and they're crafting those, I believe, into one, into one bill um, because there, as I said, there are several that are out there. Um, so we, I'll continue to monitor all of that as we, as we move forward. And, and Bill, just for those watching, I, I think that maybe we should expand on that a little bit. I mean, the the beauty of that is that, it, especially if you, when you have committee meetings and you have people who don't live here year round, it's you know it's 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 clearer for us to be able to have that remote participation. Would do you think that it would also extend to like a once in a while situation where a select board member might be out of town? Um, yeah. As, as I said, there are several different bills, so they're trying to craft yeah. one together, but I think that's the intent of those is so that it would it would apply to all boards and committees. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just wanted to ensure people, assure people who are watching that it's certainly not my intent to continue this kind of zoom thing post pandemic on a on any kind of regular basis it's really for uh, sort of one off situations, I think. Right, exactly. But when it comes to committees, you know, I think it's. I think it's important um, from that yeah. perspective. You, you know, many many residents that may serve on committees may go to different areas of the country um, right. during winter months or whatnot. So, right. it certainly would allow committee work to continue. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree that I think that's even more important. I think that for a select board member, you're obviously here. If you're running for the select board, you're obviously going to be here full time, or you should be, <laughs> and uh, and 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 that it's a once in a while type of situation that. You know, you're on vacation or you're you know and you rather than miss the meeting you have the opportunity to weigh in right um some other items that is not in my written report that have come up since i wrote the report last tuesday or wednesday um on the on the wastewater topics um the, the select board in the town had uh, asked woodard and kern to move forward with a wastewater uh with a study for our own wastewater plant. Um, and there was miscommunication between myself and Woodard and Kern. They had thought that we wanted them to focus on our uh, interlocal agreements with Camden first and Rockland and negotiating those or renegotiating those, I should say, and, and not do the plant at the same time. So I've cleared that misconception up um, and they're gonna be starting that, uh, that study uh, quickly and kept playing catch up with that. Um, and I will say that, you know, we have had discussions with Camden around the interlocal agreement. Um, I think it's important to note that on tomorrow night's agenda for the Camden Select Board, um, there are two items for the wastewater commissioners. One is the um, Rockport's funding share of the wastewater plant, uh, waste, wastewater treatment plant upgrades um, and how that's going to, to work. Um, and then the other is the uh, interlocal agreement discussion. Um, I talked with um, their town manager earlier today and um, fully understand what uh, what they're what they're doing there. So, um, but I didn't want the board to be surprised if you see those items on their agenda uh, tomorrow night. Um, also, uh, we opened bids 
last week for the uh, Route so One. Can I just go back to the um, interlocal agreement? Is there some sure. time frame that we're hoping to get this? Um, well, I mean, we're hoping we're hoping within the next couple of months to get that worked out because as we move into our budget for the wastewater side of the equation, which mm -hmm. obviously is different than our operational and capital budgets, that um, that we can have that wrapped up so that we know what our costs are going into um, into the next budget year for the wastewater. Um, and I am optimistic that we'll see a, a decrease um, uh, in, the, in the rate. Uh, right. And then once we go from, once we finish negotiations with Camden, then we'll move on to Rockland uh, and the go negotiations there because that contract doesn't, doesn't end. Um, Camden's has already expired and we're, we're operating under an expired contract currently, so. Right. The length of that contract or the, certainly the length of that contract is gonna tie into this whole issue of a wastewater treatment plant. And I mean, if we're doing the two things kind of at the, simultaneously, then, you know, we're not gonna tie ourselves to 20 years with Camden Right. It's possible that we might move. Possible that we might move a different direction. Right? Yeah, and, and we're, you know, we'll, we'll. I don't want to talk too much about it because we're in a public meeting about negotiations. But um, we're certainly looking at all of those types right. of issues. Simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, the bids for the uh, Route One wastewater extension project came in last Thursday. Were due last Thursday. And were opened here at the town office, um, and we're. Um, zoomed out to all of the potential bidders. Um, so we did do a public bid opening here and zoomed out to the bidders, uh, the results as we were opening them. Um, the bids, remember this is for the combined uh, water and uh, wastewater project. Um, so the combined bids came in at um, roughly 6.7 million. Uh, there were three bids total, 6.7 million, 6.4 million and 5.8 million. Um, in, in talking with uh, Nate McLaughlin of Woodard and Kern, um, he was pleased with the bids. He expected them to come in around the six and a half million dollar uh, total. Um, so he's in the process now of uh, essentially dividing up the responsibilities from those bids as to how much the cost is for the water company and how much the cost is for the town of Rockport. But he feels that we're well within our budget um, for our share of that project. So I expect to have, I should have those, um, those results uh, for your next meeting anyway to let you know um, where we stand and at some point the board obviously will have to um, um, award that contract based on the recommendations that we put together. Um, in speaking with um, Bill Napower from McEd and our contract planner, um, the EDA grant um, has moved forward uh, for this project so that's that's good news as well and, and for those of you that don't understand how the process works for the EDA there basically is a pre-application, which we had done before, um, and we're waiting to hear back from EDA as to whether or not we would be invited to apply for the grant. And that's how they work. They have a pre-application. They review those from that, um, um, from those submittals, then they basically will, will invite um, applicants to move forward with the process. And we were invited to move forward with the process and we had submitted all of the information that they requested um, back in, Oh, middle of January, I believe. Um, so we expect to hear from that um, probably middle of March, uh, roughly. Um, so we're still hopeful that that grant will come through. Um, Bill and Power seems pretty confident that um, that it will that it will come through. Um, so you know, keep your fingers crossed. So, Bill, remind people, please, of the funding for this so that they, the people watching don't think that this is going to raise their mill rate. Sure. Yeah, the waste, anything to do with wastewater is funded by the users of the system. Um, so it will not have any effect on the tax rate. Um, but we are obviously trying to get as much grant money that we can possibly get for this project. We, we did receive $200,000 from the Northern Border Commission uh, grant for this project so we do have that in our in our pocket um, but if the EDA grant comes through for upwards of two million dollars that certainly would make a big difference in the cost for the for the users as well and uh, one other thing that I'd like to clarify um, those of you that may be watching uh, and for the board members 
Last week, I was quoted in a press release um, for Summit Natural Gas's announcement about um, extending their uh, natural gas down Route 1, um, also up to Belfast, but also down Route 1 through Northport, Lincolnville, Camden, Rockport, Thomaston, uh, and Rockland. Um, the comment that I made regarding natural gas potentially coming to and through Rockport um, may be misconstrued. Um, I don't necessarily support natural gas in its components, um, but what I do support is having um, the availability of natural gas in Rockport helping out from our uh, efforts for economic development perspective. Um, and I also believe that it would give homeowners as well as business owners another choice for heating and cooling their homes and buildings. Um, and I wanna make it clear that I was not speaking on behalf of the select board. The select board has not um, talked about this topic um, and they haven't certainly taken any position on this topic. Um, Jeff? Yeah, uh, Bill, I read your comments and they were certainly appropriate. I did not misconstrue those in any way, shape or form. And I think that the feedback that you may be reacting to uh, has a separate agenda that uh, has little to do with the good of the citizens of Rockport. I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. That's all I have for my report. Are there any other questions? Okay, it doesn't look like it. Um, so, Bill, do we have any public input on non-agenda items? Let me look to see if we have anything. I don't see anything on live stream and I do not have any other emails. I did have that one email that um, was in regards to a question about short-term rentals, which I think probably will be addressed. Yeah, we'll address under... it. We'll address it under agenda item seven. We won't ignore it. Yep. Thanks. That's it. And remind me under agenda item seven. <laughs> um, okay. Um, amendments to the agenda. Okay. Hearing none. So, uh, Mark. Were you? Oh, no, okay. Sometimes you reach for your computer and it makes me think that you're about to say something. Um, okay, uh, the uh, consent agenda. Um, any motions on that? Move the board, approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, uh, any discussion? Okay, uh, vote Michelle. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Denise. Yes. Mark. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you, Victoria Condon, for having been willing to uh, participate. And I know your things have changed for you. Um, all right, moving on to action items. Um, do we have with us uh, Emily and Ben, Bill? You know what? I don't think that I actually sent them the invite to the meeting. Oops. <laughs> to be honest with you, I was just looking and I was like, wait a minute. Sorry, Emily and Ben. Okay. Yeah. Well, but I, but I think it's pretty well laid out um, their proposal for the Camden International Film Festival to use the uh, RES site again this summer. And I apologize um, to Ben and to Emily completely because I think I dropped the ball on that. Um, and I think it was very successful last year. I mean, we didn't have any neighbor complaints. We I know every time there was an issue, they addressed it immediately and um, just a wonderful, uh, something yeah. good for the residents. Yeah, and I'll just, yeah. <clears throat> for, for the people that may be listening to, um, I'll, I'll just kind of summarize what they put together, which essentially is basically the same thing as last year. Um, they want to use the RES site for the Shotwell drive-in uh, again, um, they have, um, much like the 2020 season, they propose making the use uh, of the community space during time it is not otherwise used by softball leagues, um, kids that have been riding on bikes, exercise classes, et cetera. Um, they were very, they were excellent last year in 
talking with the other groups and, and uh, making sure that the schedules worked well. Um, and again, with them using it basically uh, an hour before sunset uh, and then 90 minutes after, um, really th there's no other issues going on there for, um, uh, for that type of thing. And from their information that they presented, um, they hosted 855 cars at 33 community screenings uh, last season. Um, and they say they served an estimated 2,500 community members um, from July through October. Um, and they're thinking about starting this summer, June 3rd, and running until October 23rd. So they'd be starting a little bit, I think a little bit sooner than they did last year by the time they could get everything up and running. Um, essentially traffic flow will be exactly how it was, one, one entrance, one exit. They direct, um, they direct everything um, with staff. Um, one thing that they do, I think, have um, for, for this season, they would like to have up to three food trucks um, on site. I think they used one last year. Um, and I think that we can easily allow that um, moving forward for this summer. Um, and they're looking at setting them up most likely um, behind the projection booth there that they set up last year, which is that cargo storage container with the lighthouse on top of it um, and I did just get an email from Emily and they, they said that she said that they are standing by if there are any questions so okay Jeff I know you had your hand yeah. and I am not uh, downplaying this in any way shape or form I just have a clarifying question last year when we reviewed and approved this request the number of shows anticipated was much less than the 33 that actually occurred what is the total number of shows proposed for this year so that we know that number now and not later? Well, but as a reminder, last year we declined to hold them to a particular number of shows and we kept it kind of within reason and we said, you know, we would see how it goes. So the fact that they had more than they had initially anticipated was within the discretion that we gave to Bill in working with them. I just want to point that out so it doesn't sound like they were violating any agreement we had with them. I've just I've just emailed that question, so we'll, I'll see if we can get an answer from that fairly quickly, just so that we do have it. Um, okay. Um, while we're waiting on, on, on that response, um, there is a question that the RES task force had um, for the board's input. And that is that, um, you know, as, as Bill noted, and we all know that there are, you know, these other um, activities that take place there, exercise class, some, some recreational activities. Um, last year we had um, approved a retail uh, trailer situation to be there and then she wound up uh, going elsewhere um, but we had approved it and um, the RES task force just for you know for your information their recommendation was to to really encourage um, use of RES for various um, uses you know whether it be other you know whether it be a, a market um, a, a market, a farmer's market, or um, or other, you know, retail types of uses to be more of a, give it more of a community atmosphere um, and, and use. Um, and, you know, knowing that this is a temporary use until, you know, until it gets developed or redeveloped at some point, but they would like to encourage it. They know that that's kind of beyond their mandate, but I said that I would bring it up to the board just to get the board's feel for you know, is it something that we say, yeah, some it's okay, or do we say, yeah, we really would like to encourage it, or maybe even, you know, let people know that, you know, if you have ideas and want to bring them to, uh, to Bill, um, please do so. This would obviously be daytime kinds of activities that don't interfere with, you know, with the drive-in or anything else. So I'm just asking for the board's input. 
I think it's a great use of that space and we should encourage that. Anybody else have thoughts on it? Oh, I'm just wondering if we should put it as a formal discussion item on our next agenda. We Some can. Yeah. yeah, we. I'm okay with it conceptually. Yeah, I mean, it was really just an informal thing because we knew that we were going to have the drive in on the agenda. I told them that I would um, raise it to you. So that's why it wasn't a formal item. And I will say that Emily um, has joined us um, and she did she did answer my question. She said they expect about 40 shows um, for this for this season, but she certainly really just did. an informal thing because we knew that we were going to have the drive in on the agenda. I told them that I would um, raise <laughs> that. Uh -oh. I, think ben, I think Ben had the live stream on in the background, oh, oh, oh. so I just muted him. But Emily, if you want to expand on it, I apologize for not sending the link out um, sooner to, uh, to you and Ben. Um, so I kind of introduced your topic and the board was discussing it and, and Jeff had had a question that I had emailed you about how many shows that you expect um, and you'd answered with 40, but if, if you want to expand on that, you certainly can. Sure, we've been we've been following along. We've been listening to the meeting, anticipating that we might jump on if if uh, if you let us in um, to answer questions. But yeah, it's we're anticipating around forty. Um, our plan is to start June third, I believe that's in the proposal, and go through October again, um, and do some screenings uh, for the SIF weekends. Um, and we're aiming to do Thursdays and Saturdays this year. Um, which is a lot like it looked last year, um, and work with other um, nonprofits who are also interested in, in using the space. So, for example, we did a, a concert with Bay Chamber um, just as a, you know, during the, the, the time leading up to um, one of our screenings when people were gathering and parking. We had a, a concert with Bay Chamber where we had um, string instruments on four different sort of mini stages. Um, and piped the sound into the car. So there'll be there'll be little events like that in conjunction with some of our screenings. Um, and yeah, we're we're you know absolutely you know fielding questions um, and and uh, um, requests from other community organizations um, who are looking for this kind of space to use. Nobody's thinking that they're going to have galas this summer. <laughs> so yeah, Ben's on too. <laughs> Anything to add, Ben? Yeah, no, I think the, just um, part of the reason why the scope kind of expanded a bit last year is, um, well, you know, the, the project got kind of took a life of its own in a really exciting and good way. Um, as, as the as the 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 um, space became developed and 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 the, the screen became, uh, you know, uh, what it is. Um, you know, we just got kind of caught up in the enthusiasm and excitement and realized that there was a, a real, um, you know, uh, overwhelming amount of support from the community for something like this. And it felt almost like, um, you know, a bit of a disservice to, to not try and bring the community together as much as possible. Um, so, you know, that that's our attention. I think we're kind of coming out of this year with a bit more of an understanding of um, what it takes to actually execute the um, the drive-in as a venue, um, and adequately staffing the parking captains, the production manager, and we feel like we can get um, two screenings in really um, June, July, August, um, and in October. Where where the question mark is, we say forty issues because it really what we we screened about twelve or thirteen films over the course of the festival last year. We we ran it twelve nights in a row. Um, you know, that was, that was kind of, um, lucky with the weather, but, um, we're still kind of figuring out what the scope of the festival will look like if we can have any kind of in-person, um, et cetera, et cetera. We're all, we're not super excited about a three week festival like we had last year, just because it's pretty exhausting. So that the number may go down a little bit, but we think roughly 40 would be, um, what we're aiming for in terms of how we're scoping out some of these roles for the production team. Great, thanks. Any other questions in the board? No, I think kudos to you guys. It sounds like it worked out great last year and everybody was very, as you said, enthusiastic and I haven't heard any complaints about it, so. No, I think people are gonna be happy to hear it's gonna happen again. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we, did, we wanna say we are uh, 
both Scott and Bill were really wonderful to work with, um, uh, readily available, accessible. Every time we had a question, every idea that we wanted to see, um, you know, kind of come into fruition, they were um, really responsive, met us on site, talked it through. And, um, you know, that was that I think that was really critical to the partnership being such a success. So I just wanted to thank Thank, uh, thank Bill and, and everyone as well for, for, for being such an intricate part of this process. Well, I move the board approve the use of the RES site by SIF for 2021 with the full details to be approved by the town manager and code enforcement officer. And I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? Okay, the vote, Mark. Yes. Denise. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Michelle. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thank you all. Yeah, take care. Yeah. Bye-bye. Right. OK, the next agenda item is to act on the request for membership change on the Comprehensive Plan Committee. Um, Bill, you, Bill, you want to introduce this? And then we've got Rich Anderson with us as chair of the committee. Yes, so I'm basically going to just introduce Richard, uh, Rich Anderson as chair of the uh, comp plan committee, um, I guess co-chair maybe is the correct term. Um, I don't remember. They've gone oh, through. He's, he's chair. Okay, and Megan Dwyer is vice chair. Okay. Um, so Rich brought this to my attention and he asked um, uh, to bring it to the select board. And so um, here we are. So with that, I think I'll just turn it over to uh, to Rich. Yes, and, and uh, the note I sent to Bill and, and I think you forwarded to you is that uh, I mean, there are a couple of things here. One is that our, our committee is four people short and uh, of the required number. And we're in the process of, of drafting our, our uh, bylaws. And, and so it was a time to deal with, you know, as we draft these dial bylaws, uh, let's, it, it, might it be better to have it more flexible that we have eight to uh, 10 citizens rather than right now required 12 citizens. And that, um, <clears throat> the, the ability to find uh, people willing to serve is, is part of the issue. Uh, but probably more importantly is just the, the, just the trying to manage a, a, a meeting with 18 people uh, is uh, in, in getting things done in, in an expedient way is, is difficult. And so we, um, we wanted to, as we were drafting these bylaws to try and uh, see if you would be agreeable to uh, changing to uh, the uh, the number that we presented in there, which would be 13 to 15 members rather than 18 members, and um, and we and we, it's really that, that we suggested one select board member rather than two. More thinking that select board members might appreciate that uh, one less being for one of them to have to go to. Uh, but that's that's truly that's your, you know, that, that's you to decide there. But uh, anyway, that's that's what we're trying to do is just get the meeting, the, the group down to a little more manageable level to um, make it easier to find the qualified people that we want and um, get the meetings more expedient. Just for clarification, our current committee makeup as approved by the select board included a fixed number of 12 citizen members, two select board members, which I'm not in favor of changing for multiple reasons. Uh, and then the other committee members were specified uh, based on committees they came from or uh, parts of the town government. But it, it was a large committee of, of 18 a proposal to provide some leeway in that citizenship size <laughs> of say a minimum of eight, but no more than 12 would provide the ability to manage the group size and also uh, not have to revise the bylaws every time something changes. Um, do you remember, I was uh, looking to see if anybody has a question or comment they wanna make, but uh, just let me know. Um, do you remember how we came up with the 18? I mean, we didn't come up with the 18, did we? Was it because we got so many people who signed up or it was kind of inherited because that's what it was last time? Or do you remember the history, anybody? I think it was a legacy. 
number more than anything. Because it is a we, we reviewed and approved it. Yeah. Mark, is that your recollection too? I, I think there was a great deal of eagerness back in the day and uh, not so much now. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I, I, you know, I do, I, I personally, you know, sympathize with you because it's, um, it's, it is a crazy big number. And I remember that first meeting I went to, it was like, you know, we, <laughs> it, it was when everybody was uh, right before we had to quit holding in-person meetings. And um, it, it was a monster of a, of a, of a, meeting but I guess what I wonder is um I'll just throw out that uh, you know you had suggested Rich and thanks for bringing this forward you had suggested a minimum of um eight and a maximum of 10 citizens and of course of course the people who are on these committees as committee representatives are citizens as well or residents as well and so it's not like we don't have those people are also residents. So setting aside the select board recommendation for a minute, as Jeff said, there are reasons to keep maybe keep that at two. But I wonder if what you, we might want to consider is saying that we have up to eight. So then that way we're not, I, I was trying to not, you don't want to kick anybody off that's on there now, right? So if my math is wrong, let me know. But in, I was trying to you know recognize those eight that are or those people that are interested in on it now, but say up to, because so then it wouldn't get any, I mean, my idea was what if it, we do it so it doesn't get any bigger, but why have a minimum number of citizens? Why not say it's okay if there's only six or five or whatever, if, if we lose a couple, then is that such a bad thing in terms of numbers, Jeff? Just to, there may be, because the way we had, if you look at the makeup of the committee in its entirety, uh, you can see that there's one select board member or two, rather, uh, one planning board rep, one zoning board of appeals rep, one conservation committee rep, and one harbor committee rep. So those people were appointed to the committee to represent and bring that uh, group of thoughts and, and opinions with them and to represent their committees as a whole. The desire to have the citizen portion of it was to bring the general population into it that may have lots of ideas about lots of things. So I would propose that some number be a minimum and some number be a max so that there's a range that between the committee and the select board we can manage to and uh, go from there. I'm fearful that we don't want to go to zero citizen members because then we don't have a diverse committee. So to, in order to maintain the diversity of the committee, I think it's have a minimum. So if we had four, so that's four of the designated slots separate from the select board. Yeah. Um, and yes. then four citizens. I recall that there's two select board members, one planning rep, one zoning CBA, one conservation committee and one harbor. So that's a group, big group all by itself. Exactly. And, uh, and then on top of that, you've got the general citizenry. So that's six people um, by yeah, itself. I was just suggesting a minimum of four citizens, sort of generic citizens on top of the designated slots. I thought it was interesting that somebody said that planning, the planning, I think Rich said that the um, Camden does their planning board. I'm not suggesting we do the planning board, but that they have the five member planning board and two alternates is their comprehensive plan folks so um that's not i mean unless you have whatever diversity you're thinking about jeff on that planning board that's not you know the diversity that you seek yeah jeff. madam chair if i could let me make a motion and then we can go into discussion and tweak it if that works but i would motion that the membership uh be modified to the the uh uh, comp committee, comp plan committee, such that there's a minimum of six and maximum of 10 citizen members replacing the current stated 12. Is there a second? I'll second. So 
can I just ask you, and then that would be, um, given that there's six that are baked in and there's currently 15 on there now, right? Because you said, wait a minute, there's 14 on there now? Because you said there's- 14, it, it would work. In its current configuration, it works in those ranges. So it's, um, so it would, it's six, you said, I'm sorry, you said a minimum of six and a maximum of- 10. 10. So, so that would be a total of 12, between 12 it's, it's and- 14 total max. Mm, I thought it was- no, I'm sorry, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a- what I was thinking is more like a 12 to four, or 12 to 14, you know, again, you don't want to. Right. But you, you don't, don't have to, to we don't have to do it. I mean, we're putting it, we're putting the wiggle room in the, in the bylaws that say it can be between eight and 10. So you're only reducing it by two and creating a little wiggle room, right? A, a minimum number. Yeah. But the motion was a minimum of six. That's correct. A minimum of six and a maximum of 10 on the citizen bucket. So, uh, and you had recommended, Rich, you and Megan had recommended eight to 10, but are you okay with the six to yeah, 10? I mean, that, that's fine. That, that, I mean, that's, that is, gives more, more room to, to maneuver than, than what we'd recommended. So I'm fine. Yeah. And it, it also gets to Deborah's point earlier about many of the people that are already assigned there through their committees are citizens as well. So it, it that minimum reflects their contributions that could be there as well. Right, because they're not limited to speaking about only the subject matter or the committee that they represent. Yeah, I think that's an important point. They are citizens. I mean, they're, they're as much citizens as the rest of us on that committee uh, from the standpoint of, of they only are sitting on a different committee as well. Right. We'd be very happy if that's the way it is. Okay. Um, is there any other, let's see, there's first and second. So is there any other discussion? Okay, can we vote? Mark? Yes. Denise? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Michelle? Yes. And I vote yes. All right, thanks, Rich. Well, thank got a you lot very of much. Ahead of you. Thanks for getting on the work. On. Yeah. All right, take care. All right, the next action item, oh, is to act on the meeting minutes of July 27th, 2020. And uh, Bill had provided those to us in advance and Michelle wasn't there, so she abstains from this. I move the board approve the July 27, 2020 meeting minutes as presented. Anybody want a second? I'll second. Okay, any discussion? The only thing that I would say is I had some connectivity issues and not all of it I can attest to. Uh, Bill had done a pretty good job of indicating when I came in and out of it. So I'll just use that as a caveat for my vote. Do you want a caveat or do you want to abstain? Up to you. We still have- well, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with the parts that I was there. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, unless anybody has any problems with me voting uh, for the whole thing. No, do you, Bill? Is that no. okay with you? No, I don't. I mean, I don't have any issues with that. He was there for, Mark was there for most of the meeting and I have noted when he wasn't and the motions yeah. were discussion during that time. So yeah. that's okay. clear. Okay, so we have a first and second. Uh, so Denise. Yes. Mark. Yes. Jeff. Yes. And I vote yes and Michelle abstains. <laughs> I think that the confirmation of her abstention. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, the next item is uh, discussion item on the June town meeting. And first, I think that uh, the first part of this, we want to have Bill lead us on in terms of how to conduct it, the method of how to conduct it, uh, given that pandemic situation. 
Yes. Yeah, so as everyone knows, last year was a mess. Um, when it came to trying to schedule the town meeting, annual town meeting, um, certainly was eventually very successful um, being held on August 18th. Uh, and it was certainly it was done by referendum as everybody can remember. Um, my, I wanted to get this on the board's um, discussion agenda because you know we are in the process of planning for the town meeting. So it makes our life much, much easier if we can plan ahead when it comes to this. And when you think, you know, we're thinking about June and it's February, well, we've already put together a schedule <laughs> for that. So um, because of the way that the pandemic is continuing to drag on, and of course there is light at the end of the tunnel with the various vaccines that are out there, but the it is slow getting them out. My recommendation is that, um, that the board um, schedule the town meeting by referendum again, uh, but just hold it on the on the normal date, which would be the, the Tuesday in June. I think it's, I don't know if I put it in the material or not. Um, I think it's- what you, would in, what you had indicated, Bill, I think uh, you would recommend it to be held by referendum as it was last August. There's no, I don't think there's any mention yeah. about but we would do it in June. Yeah, we would hold it. We would hold it by referendum, but we would do it on our normal um, election day, which would be yeah, would be June eighth. Would be Tuesday, June eighth. So instead of having the um, referendum items, including election of uh, select board members, budget committee members, and what have you, um, on Tuesday, and then the open town meeting on Wednesday, we would simply have all of the articles be voted on um, by ballot on um, June eighth. The benefit of course to this is that we do have increased participation because we have absentee ballots that would be available uh, for people to vote on the various items that are on the town meeting warrant. Um, the, the downfall is that you can't have that open floor debate when it comes to budget items, uh, for example. Um, but we do have the ability to have public hearings prior to that. We're required to have one anyway um, Obviously that will probably be through electronic means, um, but that can be done. Um, and we can set up a different format, whether it's through a webinar or something along those lines, um, but we certainly can do that ahead of time. Um, but in, in planning it now, if, if the board does agree that we should go with a referendum, then at least we can um, begin planning, getting information out to the public, uh, especially through the newsletter uh, format. Um, which would be, you know, would be helpful for us to be able to know ahead of time um, to get information out as well. So certainly want to have questions or comments. Denise, you have a question? Um, or a comment. I just, I would be in favor of that. I mean, I just feel like we don't, we don't know and won't know um, what the situation in June will be, but it's likely that not everyone's going to have had a vaccine by then. So to have a large public gathering Unfortunately, I think it won't be time yet. And, and we still are under, I didn't mention, but we still are under the, the limits of gathering. So, you know, we're still, at, we're still at the number of 50 people that can gather inside, um, but you still must maintain social distancing, which doesn't allow us to do it at the Opera House. Um, and you're maxed at 100 outside with social distancing in the same area as classified by um, the governor's orders. So. Um, it does limit us to what we can, what we can do, and and make sure that we're accommodating everybody that wants to vote um, on the various items. So, yeah, uh, Mark. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I mean, you, you certainly get a better idea of how people think uh, when you have, you know, seven hundred to a thousand, twelve hundred people show up and vote versus, you know, forty-five to fifty-five at the opera house. Um, you certainly have a better uh, feel for it. So yeah, yeah. June 8th sounds good. Michelle? Yeah, I, I would agree. And I like the idea that we're getting it out uh, early so people can plan, people know. I think that the challenge we're going to run into with anything is we just don't know when we're going to be able to be in groups again. And at some point, we, we have to make the decision. And I think the sooner we make it and just make the plan, the better off we are. Bill, uh, Jeff, did you have anything you wanted to add or? Oh, I can support June as 
Okay. Oh, I yeah, I agree. Through. More inclusive. It's going to be more inclusive to do it this way. Bill, do you have to um, what, have to have a vote on this or not? I, I don't think we need to have a vote at this point. Um, when we get to drafting the town meeting warrant, you know, just the language will just um, will just be changed in that, so it goes from voting at the um, voting in person to voting at the polls. Um, okay. And, and then and then that leads to you know the other the other topic that we have. Um, it's discussion about potential articles. Obviously, we have. Um, I wanted to sort of just jump in at this point. Sure. Um, just might save some some discussion time. I've been giving the short term rental regulation a lot of thought. I've been looking over reviewing the workshops, the comments we've received. I've been reaching out and talking to other residents and have just been giving this a lot of thought over the last several weeks. And it's become apparent to me that regulating short term rentals is just not a priority for our town residents at this time, and whether that's due to the pandemic. Um, but I, I'm on the select board to serve the town's residents. Um, and for that reason, I'm moving for us to table the short-term rental regulation. And I'll second that motion. Um, I have a few things that I would like to say about that topic too. I'll try to um, be briefer than my notes. Um, but, um, you know, as we've said a number of times, we started this process uh, because we had received comments from residents um, who wanted us to address the issue. And we held a workshop in September 2019 in which it indicated to us that we needed to do something with respect to regulation of the issue. At that time, we had four members of the select board who supported pursuing an STR ordinance. Um, I think that uh, there are a number of us that have, uh, who have looked into this in much greater detail and depth and looked at what's been happening nationwide and throughout Maine. And it's clear to me at least that towns who don't address this proactively uh, tend to be the ones who regret it later. But Having said that, we have moved through the process. We've listened. We've listened to SDR owners. We have made many changes. We have um, done a presentation last, uh, last board meeting. We have had several drafts. We have had more workshops in this than on any other topic that we've ever had, um, since, certainly since I've been on the select Board, and we've tried to be transparent by putting all of the comments of STR um, uh, on either side of the STR issue uh, on the website to make it um, easily accessible. Um, the one thing I'd like to say uh, in particular is that unfortunately those residents who do support uh, some kind of regulation have not been willing to publicly come forward for the most part. And I don't criticize them. I don't think we should criticize them for not doing that particularly because this public fray has been pretty heated and there have been a small, small minority of residents who have, you know, who have engaged in personal attacks and rhetoric that frankly I think is unbefitting of civil discourse. And um, the, um, the majority of the select board has been in favor, I think, of getting this to a June ballot. Um, I think that um, that's the proper thing to do because we don't want to listen to just the loudest voices, but to all voices of the town. And in doing that, I think that the way to do that is to give everybody the ability to vote on the measure at the ballot box. However, we've gotten to the point where the rhetoric is so, and the, and the temperature on this issue is so high and so hot that I think that um, it's in the best interest of the town to cool the temperature down. So I support tabling it. Other comments? Jeff? Yeah. Uh, wow. I didn't think we'd be here at this point in time uh, determining the fate of this issue going forward. Uh, but let me pull some comments up from our last meeting. Uh, plus, I could tell from our last workshop, kind of read the tea leaves and say, see where things were going, take the temperature a little bit. You know, short-term rental regulation is a contempt 
temporary subject and town government all over, particularly in Maine and the Midcoast. It's as contemporary and current as windmill cell towers, tiny houses, and solar farms. Our neighboring communities have addressed the issue. Camden's revisiting their short-term ordinance. Short-term rental concerns in Rockport are or will be in the future no different than in any other town. The town government process has been followed and it should continue in my opinion and it should uh, be for the voters to decide the fate of this ordinance. Some facts that I pulled together for the last meeting that I held back sharing, but I think now is the time. Uh, the commentary and the feedback from either side of the issue come from less than 30 people. And that's less than 1% of the voting population of Rockport of over 3,100 voters. You know, some of that feedback even came from non-residents. A majority of the opposing feedback came from those who operated short-term rentals or had a financial interest personal stake that they perceive might be at risk. And they certainly have the right to provide that feedback, but so do others with a differing opinion. And they need to be able to provide that opinion free from personal tax, which you pointed out earlier. Some believe that this or any version of the short-term rental ordinance will affect their ability to generate income and is a violation of property rights and all sorts of other things to that. 60% of the feedback came from less than five individuals who have submitted many, many emails or editorial leads. Uh, the disinformation has just been unbelievable. Little feedback came from the remaining 99% or 3,100 voters who may wish to engage, uh, they may not wish to engage in that feedback at this point in time because they fear personal attack. Uh, you know, some of the commentary, as you said, is, has been a personal attack in nature. Uh, but I would say that, you know, the voters need to be able to, to make this call. This ordinance, as it was drafted, was primarily intended to require short-term uh, registration in the town, ensure the safety of residents, guests, and first responders, and provide a structure that will allow the planning boards in the future to address the potential community sprawl and protect our neighborhood spirit. Uh, there was a comment I saw in Bar Harbor paper last year at this time when Bar Harbor was dealing with this issue. And a counselor there said, Bar Harbor has a situation where we're losing housing to vacation rentals. Uh, that particular counselor said, I'm hearing from people who really miss having a neighborhood. They have a revolving door of neighbors. And that may be happening and probably is in Rockport from some that we've heard. There's between 79 and 250 short-term rentals in this area. So just to shorten up my thoughts here, it's become readily apparent that the issues come to the point where one must pick a side either in the community or on the select board to battle. And that civil discourse and discussion has, as you mentioned earlier, let's just say left the town on the issue. Unfortunately, this is quite dysfunctional. Doesn't add any value, nor does it benefit the community as a whole. Uh, however, all residents need to have the opportunity to vote on this issue and do not have the select board be heavily influenced by very few people with a personal agenda that are causing the issue to be kicked down the road. So the voting process is there for all to express their uh, desires free of judgment, that's the beauty of our system. Not moving the short-term rental issue to vote in June, in my opinion, is denying all 3,100 plus of our voting residents the right to express their proper say in the process of grief and fear. You done? That's all I shall say. Mark, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, you know, I, and I'm sure there are people that will dance with glee because of this, but you know, I, we probably shouldn't be debating or giving sides and, and just when the time comes to be putting something on the warrant or not, we just either will or we won't. And I hope we give as much time to talking about, you know, the, the density, the RES site and other things that are on here, not just the short-term rental thing that everybody is so passionate about. Um, you know, that's just my two cents worth. And I don't think there needs to be a motion or a second because 
Um, it's just one of those things that we get to do down the road. We either put it on or we don't. Well, actually, there is a motion in second, and I think that um, I think that it behooves us to address it because we have a workshop scheduled on February 16th. We have a lot of time between now and then in which we're going to continue to generate lots of letters back and forth and deal with this issue. And I think if we're going to put it to bed and table it, we should go ahead and act on the motion and do so. Yeah, I mean, my reason for speaking up is I, I just feel like um, <clears throat> we've gotten a fair amount of input from residents, but I feel like the pandemic has hampered our ability to really discuss this as a community and listen to each other respectfully. It's so much easier to say things through even, even Zoom, but through letters, through emails. And if you're in a public forum with each other, I think that the level of discourse is, is a much healthier one for our community. Um, I've missed the chance to talk to residents informally. Usually you run into people and they can give you what they're thinking about something or um, leaving meetings. And we just have not had those opportunities. And I just feel like this is a really hard time for everyone. And in my view, um, it's pretty clear that this has become very divisive in the community. And I, I don't think that's, again, in my view, the highest and best use for what the town can do for its residents. Michelle? Yeah, I, I will agree. I certainly wasn't prepared to talk about it tonight. I think I shared my comments um, and my thoughts on the last meeting. I think it has caused a lot of angst. It's caused a lot of concern with people wondering if and when and how am I going to pay my bills. And I think that there are a lot more important things that we can spend time and get people back. And, and I agree, Jeff. I think, you know, we want to be proactive, but I'm not sure this is this is the thing we not need to die on the hill for on right now. So um, I am in favor of tabling it. And as you say, right now, I mean, it may be down the down the road. Maybe you know, maybe there's more. Maybe, maybe there's a different sentiment. But there are other things on the on the agenda, as you say. We're about to enter a budget season. We season. We've got other things we need to focus on, and um, I, for one, don't want to spend from now until June doing nothing but listening to STR comments. I've got a lot of other things on this board that I do and that you all do. So, all right. Any further discussion? Okay, so there's a first and a second that's been made. Um, Denise, vote. Time for a vote. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Jeff. As ceremonial as it will be, uh, and just to reiterate the concern going forward, I vote no. Mark. Uh, I meant to get the uh, the question out there. Was was Denise's uh, motion to table or to not put it on? To table it, meaning to not have it on the June ballot. Yeah, no, I couldn't remember whether you said table or not put it on in June. Or I just wanted to make sure I knew that before I voted yes. Thank you. That's a yes. Okay. And I vote yes. Okay, so as um, as indicated in the agenda item, um, Bill, there's uh, there are some other things that the ORC is looking at: sign density, other issues that we'll be looking at in terms of you know articles down the road. And obviously, we don't have I don't think we have any discussion about those tonight. No, but I just thought it would was appropriate um, to to bring up all the articles or the potential articles I should say <laughs> that we know of. Um, the density discussion has kind of um, changed i think since i since i wrote the information on the uh in the comments in that um it looks like that the orc is going to be asked to look at uh or they will be looking at density from a town-wide perspective and it will be a longer discussion than um yeah. just looking at the res zone so most likely that and, and denise could probably weigh in better than than i could with this but i think that that will be a longer discussion. It won't necessarily be on the June ballot, but maybe might be on the November ballot. Um, 
And then the other topic, of course, um, are the sign standards. And there were uh, issues with our ordinance that were identified by our attorney, uh, as well as the code officer about the sign standards. I do expect those ones to be hopefully ready um, for the planning board and the select board to review and, and to get onto the ballot for June. Yes. And I think, I think we'll clarify, expand a little bit more on that density point um, when we get to the liaison reports, just a, yeah. little, a little bit too. So, uh, so that'll be a little clearer. Yep. But other okay. than that, I mean, I think that's the ones that are, that are um, in the queue, if you will. So I know we had a question on STR. The reason I, the reason I, uh, I postponed it was because of the discussion we just had. So I doubt that that's a relevant question that uh, anymore. And um, we did um, respond to it in writing too, I think. Yeah, and I will just, Jeff, did you have a? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to let you say what you need to say, Bill. <laughs> I was just yeah, going to go say ahead, that the question was, was posed as to why the hospital and resort districts are excluded from the restrictions proposed in the short term rental legislation. So I did answer that through email, but I did want to certainly bring it up um, that it was a comment on topic. Right, and I think it's irrelevant now, but we can certainly talk about it if anybody wants to. Jeff? All right, so Bill, just a matter of process. Uh, we had an open period for short-term rental commentary. Uh, I, my assumption is that, I mean, when do we shut that down or otherwise cl formally close the open period for comment on that particular? Well, first of all, I would say we will um, we'll cancel the workshop um, on February 16th, as there really is no point of having that. So um, from my perspective, I, th I thank you for freeing up an evening that I appreciate that. Um, but I would say, you know, probably the end of the week, we'll just shut down the public comment period and we'll just post anything that um, comes in by, you know, by Friday. Um, and we'll just add it to the comments for the record. So that if, uh, if and when this um, topic comes up again for discussion, then at least we have that. Um, historical perspective there to look at. And it'll be archived or whatever and available as you say, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. Anything else on this agenda item? All right. Um, the next item is select board reports. Who would like to go first? Oh, I, I'm sorry, Deborah. But okay. I thought Bill was going to review any other articles for the uh, I think you just did it in a general way. Yeah, I just okay. did it in a general way. I didn't right. want to get any specifics, just talking okay. about the potential amendments to the land use ordinance. All right. I'm good with that. Okay. So who wants to go first on select board liaison reports? Jeff. Well, I can go. The Harbor Committee has not met since our last select board meeting. Uh, another one scheduled. Pathways met on February 3rd couple things going on there. The work plan that uh, the town is doing regarding pathways, walkways, and that sidewalks, et cetera, has been compiled and shared with the Pathways Committee. The flip side of that is the Pathways Committee is pulling together a list of their long-term ideas regarding connectivity and possible things, and also working with the town of Rockport and the town of Camden to talk about, or particularly the town of Rockport, to talk about uh, seeing if there might be some interest in pursuing a joint grant with the Department of Transportation to formally look at and, and uh, do a feasibility study on some of these conceptual ideas that are out there to see if they can get from conceptual idea to can it, is it even feasible and can it really be done? So that's currently going on in that group. Uh, comp plan meets tomorrow night. Comp plan committee meets tomorrow night. Thank you to the board for making the moves on the, the membership issues. That's great to have that done. Uh, they have a lot of homework currently going on now between document review of past and marked up and other types of uh, documentation on the comp plan just to get the homework and everybody grounded down on uh, all things comp plan. And that's it. Okay, thanks. Michelle? I'll go. Mine's quick and easy. Uh, 
Jeff already covered comp plan. The planning board met last week. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend due to a conflicting meeting and none of my other committees have met since last time. So okay. that's it for me. Denise? My only committee that's met since our last select board meeting was the ORC and we are moving forward on a sign ordinance. Um, so we should, I think, be done with that this Friday at our next meeting. And economic development. Yeah, but I thought I'd let you talk. Oh, about it. because I'm the committee committee member on that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, this uh, is true. That's right. You're the liaison. Yes. No. Uh, so <laughs> that's all right. Okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. But before I do that, Mark, did you have any committees to report on? Uh, Parks and beautification, February 10th. Conservation, February 11th. The budget committee, as we all know, starts on the 17th. Were we supposed to get our budget books today? Yeah, I'm wondering about that when we're getting our. Hold on, hold on. Not today, the week of February 8th. So you'll, uh, you'll most likely be getting those on Friday. So uh, I think they originally had said February 8th, didn't it? Did she change that? I think we originally said the week of. I think it's been the week of. Yeah. Oh, we had to give ourselves some flexibility. We're just so anxious, yeah. <laughs> probably had to, probably had I, to water red ink. I'm anxious. I'm anxious to finish it too. So yeah, that, yeah. My day tomorrow, if you don't hear from me, I will be sequestered reviewing budget for the next two and a half days, probably. Okay, so um, let me uh, do um, a, as quick a job as I can on, uh, on the liaison reports. Um, uh, the um, Economic Development Committee, uh, they're, doing a, they're, they're doing a good job. Um, it's a great group of people. Um, and uh, I, they're going to start really focusing their efforts, um, uh, you know, on town, townwide, you know, economic development issues. I think we sort of sidetracked them a little bit because we asked them to um, to uh, weigh in on our RES density issues, and I'll get to that in a minute. And we sort of sidetracked them, and now we've kind of, uh, for the reasons that I'll tell you about on RES, we've sort of, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, Re refocus them on looking at economic development issues in a more macro way uh, for the town. So I really uh, look forward to working with that group and having good things come come out of that group. Um, there was something that I was going to mention um, about economic development there that somebody rem uh, jogged something in my memory and now I've forgotten it. Um, but so anyway, if I think about it as I'm talking about RES, I'll circle back to it. Um, the uh, um, with respect to RES, um, we have struggled with with within this group a little bit before the task force was formed, and then since the task force has been formed, not due to the task force fault in any way whatsoever, but we were told um, we were advised initially that it probably made sense to send out an RFQ to developers in order to basically get them to the table to help us, you know, advance ideas and structures and so forth for RES. Um, so that's why this board approved and, and extended a deadline uh, for an RFQ that was sent out. We did get a couple of responses. I think one, one, was, uh, one proposal was withdrawn. I think one may still be on the table. We were hoping to generate more interest, um, uh, more dialogue. Um, we then had a presentation by Terry Dewan in November, December, I think. Um, that was very interesting, very helpful, right? The board uh, was there for that. And I think that the, 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 the thinking that came out of that was that um, we needed to make the RES um, a little bit more, the site, a little bit more developer friendly you know, um, make sure that we had the height restrictions, the density, you know, um, set up and so forth that, you know, that would entice a, a, a developer to come and talk to the town and that that would interest developers. Well, anyway, um, now we're sort of back to, we're being advised to basically go back to square one, which is to send out an RFQ again, but that RFQ uh, it's suggested should not be so much of a submittal. Um, you know, we want to have the developers give us um, uh, their input on terms of their experience and their qualifications, 
but to um, to cast it more of a as a letter of intent, so that we can really basically just get developers to the table to dialogue with us, which is what we wanted to do a year ago, and that's what we still want to do. And so, um, so anyway, uh, some of the uh, task force members are working with Bill in just kind of cutting down the RFQ in that manner. So it's um, less onerous on the developers to have to submit things and hopefully more enticing for them to come down, you know, come meet with us, or Zoom with us, whatever, um, to have a dialogue. And the good thing was, is a couple of people on the task force, members of the task force, uh, do have some developers that might be interested in talking to us. And um, my count is there might be at least four developers out there possibly um, that might be interested in having a dialogue. So um, those people on the task force who have those connections with those developers are going to send this once the board approves it, which will be at our next meeting on February 22nd, we would then send out this you know, revised cut down letter of intent uh, to those developers through those task force contacts that we have and hopefully get some interest and some developers to the table to start having the dialogue that we've been wanting. And hence the reason um, we don't need to be overly concerned about things like density just on the RES site. Um, the Economic Development Committee doesn't have to really focus on that right now either um, because um, because you know the idea is to have these have this dialogue and then developers are going to tell us what they would like you know to see the town you know what their variances might be and that sort of thing rather than us you know assume or presume what they would want which made sense to us from the very beginning and then like I said we got off track based on some feedback we got and now we're back to the original track so I think, I think we're on the right track now, I hope so. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and the density, um, as, as Bill says, I think the ORC is gonna be looking at things like density, um, height restrictions and things like that, not so much focused on RES or, or whatever, which of course we don't want, want to do spot zoning, et cetera, but anyway, we won't get into that. But, but they really are gonna focus that on that more from a town-wide perspective. Working with the comp plan committee too, because you know, with the idea that there are certain areas in town that we might want to see more development in, and in those areas where we might want to see more development, then those might be areas where we might, might want to have an, you know, the potential of increased density and so forth. So that's my report basically on those two committees. And my last report is on the Mid-Coast Broadband Coalition, our fiber effort that started out with Camden and Rockport is now gone to Camden, Rockport, Hope and Lincolnville and Northport. And um, Union, Rockland and Thomaston have indicated an interest and their select boards are in the process. One, one of them uh, right now as we speak of um, confirming hopefully their participation in the group. So there's a lot of enthusiasm on this group. We've got some economic development directors from some other towns who are really focused on, um, on getting grant opportunities and so forth um, for, um, you know, for consulting. And um, anyway, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the, the enthusiasm that this has generated. It's a way different situation than it was a few years ago. That's all I have. So, Bill, do you have anything else to add before we go to executive session or anybody else? I'm good. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody with their hand up. So if we could have a motion to go to executive session, please. I move the board convene an executive session pursuant to one MRS section 4056A to discuss a personnel matter. Second. Oh. Okay. Mark beat you to it. <laughs> okay. Um, any discussion? All right. Uh, Michelle, you vote first. Yes. Jeff? Yes. Denise? Yes. Mark? Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you in executive session.